Whew. Welcome guys. Just wait for a few more people to tune in as usual and then we'll get started and wait for this dog next door to take it easy. Big game this week though, absolutely tomorrow night um, against Melbourne. They've got a lot of changes this week. We've gone maybe one surprise change, but overall pretty happy with how we're looking. Um, whereas Melbourne are kind of all over the shop, not knowing not knowing who to play and, and how to really deal with where they're at at the moment. Um, so we'll, we'll go in through, we'll go through the changes and, and, and see how you guys are feeling. Let me know how your week's been, how you're feeling about the game. You can comment and, and we'll answer them as usual. Um, I think this is a game that we really need to show that we're, we're up there with the best team. So the, this is the similar to me to the Essendon game where you've just got to go and you've, you've got to get the job done. Um, we're clearly favourites for a reason. We've had a better season, but Melbourne, on their day, they've got a, you know they've got enough power in that midfield. That's the key worry. Uh, they've got enough power there that if if they get enough of the ball first and they get enough inside fifties, that that's where they can get us. Um, but I think around the ground in general, we're probably the better team and the faster team. So that's that's where their key worry would be is our our foot. Our foot skills and our pace. Um, so yeah, let's let's get into the changes. I know it's it's Friday night, seven o'clock. We all have other things to do: ordering dinner, watching the Cats and Bulldogs game in about an hour. So um, let's go through this, shall we? So in terms of ins for St Kilda, we've got Ed Phillips and Hunter Clark. So Hunter Clark, great to have him back. He had a rest last week, and. Um, you know, he, we kind of lacked his his composure in that last 10, 15 minutes of the Brisbane game. I thought overall everyone stood up in that game, but in those key moments in the last five minutes, you, you feel like Hunter Clark would have done one or two special things and could have turned the tide in the game, you know. So having him back this week is a big plus for us. Ed Phillips is another one that before he was dropped last week, he was pretty good. He kicked a couple of goals against Geelong and got a lot of the ball. He's a good runner, and I think that's the key the key thing for him this week and, and the reason why we've brought him in. It's going to be warm. Um, it's going to be like 26 degrees and humid when we're running around tomorrow night. So having someone like Ed Phillips that's a, an endurance beast that can run all day and, and spread and just be that, that connector, he doesn't need to do anything amazing. But anytime we get a runner, we want to have players like him and Sinclair with their endurance skills to to start running and to start exposing Melbourne on the outside and that's absolutely where you know this game is going to be one for us is if we can get enough run then we should win this game comfortably if it becomes a slog and they start you know causing us problems on the inside then that's where they get the upper hand but I think you know it's easier for us to get them on the outside than it is for them to get us on the inside because we've got Jack Steele and Jones in, in great form Seb Ross Kept Lockie Neal to zero clearances for the first time since 2015 last week. So he's in good nick. And we've got, obviously, Rowan Marshall and Paddy Ryder um, in. And that's why I'm surprised with Melbourne. They've dropped Pruce. So they've only got the one ruck. They're really only going with Gorn and maybe Mitch Brown to, to pinch hit. But overall, we've got the ascendancy in the ruck stocks, which I think in a little way negates their strengths at clearances because, you know, when they're on top, Gorn's on top. But if we're on top of Gorn, then I think that slow down, so that slows their midfield dominance down because that's clearly where their strength is and where they think they can get us. But I think the two rucks helps us in that way automatically. Um, so for the outs, um, Jack Bytel omitted. I kind of guessed this in the podcast. We talked about it and I think it's more just he's had his three weeks. He's been pretty good. He had a really good debut. Bit of an iffy second game, and then last week he had only the eight or nine touches and, and was a bit quieter. So I think him having three weeks has been really good for him and his progression. Uh, but now that we've we've come to the nail end of the season and we've got three games left or four games left to, to really concrete our position in the top eight, 
Um, nothing against him, but you want the strongest team on the park. And I think having Clark back in and with Ross coming back in, it's probably pushed by Tell out for the next few weeks. But if a few players like Sinclair and, and um, Ed Phillips have quiet games, you can imagine Bartel's gonna gonna have a big shout come uh, finals if we make it. So um, big for him there. Carlisle is the other one. So <sighs> Joycey called it again in the podcast. He said Carlisle's probably due a week. I think maybe you know he's got a he's got a baby on the way, and that's probably taking up a lot of his mental space. So I think it's good that we give him a, maybe a week or two off just to focus on that and his family and. And um, then he can be fresh come finals if we make it and to come back into the team then and make us stronger. I think out of all weeks, it's probably a good week to rest him because you look at Melbourne's outs and they've rested Bailey Fritch, who's one of their best forwards. They've rested Tom McDonald as well. And you, you'd think that um, that's who Carlisle was going to play on. They've brought in Mitch Brown, but he's not, you know, he's not a Tom McDonald size player. He's a bit different. Um, so their main targets are probably going to be Mitch Brown and Wiedemann. Um, no Fritsch there and no Tom McDonald again makes it an uh, even better game for us in the back half because Fritsch is one of their more capable forwards, I think, and he's been in really good form. Although not kicking straight, he's getting a lot of the ball in the forward half and getting shots. Um, Tom McDonald has been pretty average since 2018 or so, um, but he always seems to play well against us. So it's good to see that he's not in this week. Um, so our back line should be on top of their forward line, I would think. Um, the other interesting thing is everyone talked about Max King being dropped. You know, um, I think it was Mark Stevens. Uh, he posted it and on Twitter and said, you know, this is the week that Max King gets rested or some shit like that. And clearly that was crap. He's playing. Um, and you know, it looks like he's not even, you know, he's not even on the bench or anything. So I don't think he's going to be dropped last minute. It looks like he's in. And I think Brett Ratton, Joyce, was just telling me Brett Ratton's come out and said that, you know, we were willing to give him a rest, but he's not showing any signs of fatigue, any signs of slowing down. So it's all guns blazing for Max King, which is amazing. You know, he hasn't missed a game all season, um, wow. which is you know, credit to his fitness and his recovery from his injury last season. Um, he looked a bit shot late last week, but, you know, he nearly got us over the line with one of the better marks of the round. So I, I back him in against against Stephen May and, and Oscar McDonald. And they've also got Tomlinson there to, to play on him and, and possibly Lever. So I feel like Melbourne are going to have a, a rotating back half with Membry and King being on top. And then you, you have players like Marshall, Ryder and Battle resting there. Um, I think we're going to have the ascendancy in the air and, and just reading a lot of their online comments. Um, sorry about the dog next door, by the way. It's been a bit of a, a, bit of a pain in the ass. Um, with, with Battle and those sort of guys there. They're, they're going to be troubled in the air, but it's going to be at ground level. I think it's going to be a, a bit of a dewy game because it's going to be so warm. I think the ball's going to be pretty slippery. And looking at, you know, the Richmonds and Essendons in the recent weeks playing up there, um, they've had that same trouble where it starts kind of dry, but then it gets a bit more along the deck, a dewy sort of skiddy sort of football game. And I think the good thing is we can cover it on both bases. You know, we can get them in the air in the forward line, but we can also get them at ground level. So this is a big game for Butler. This is a big game for Dean Kent. Um, and anyone that basically rests forward. Nick Hind as well, he's been a bit quiet the last few weeks, so I think it's critical that these sort of guys have big games because come the end of the season, we're going to be picking a very strong team to play finals, and um, yeah, they, they've got to be on top of their games. And, you know, this is a game that we should win. I hate saying it, but we should win this game because every time I say it, it goes a bit against us. Um, but this is a game we should win. You know, Melbourne have made... How many changes have they made? They've made, what, six changes. So, I mean, Gorn's come in. That obviously helps them. But I think that with Paddy Ryder and Rowan Marshall in the ruck, I think it at least, that means we can break even. At least. We can get Gorn in the contest with Ryder with his tap work, but then Marshall can expose him around the ground. And, you know, even Gorn during the week was interviewed asking if he was going to play in this game, and, and he didn't even sound that confident. So the fact that they've brought him in, I feel like maybe there's a slight chance he's a little bit underdone. So this is a chance for us to expose Melbourne, to have a big win, to get some percentage. And, you know, if Geelong go down to the dogs tonight, then that opens up the top four again for us. If Geelong win, creates a bit of a gap. But the fact that we've got West Coast coming up and West Coast had a pretty average performance last night and we play them at the Gabba, that opens up the draw for us. So we need to get minimum two wins in the next four 
Melbourne and Hawthorne, they need to be wins. And then we need to be nice to pinch one against GWS or West Coast. But both of them look pretty winnable. GWS have been average in the last three or four weeks. And Richmond, you know, proved that West Coast struggled without Kennedy and, and struggled when the ball was hit, you know, hit the deck and it wasn't clean footy and they played fast, ugly footy against Richmond. The prime footy that got them two premierships in the last three seasons and it did the job. And to me, I think that's the way we, we play the most. We play fast, frenetic football and if we do that tomorrow our leg speed is on we don't miss stupid chances we don't you know we don't have a third quarter where we just go to shit and we just play a nice consistent four quarter game we should get the job done we should so we go in favorites we hate going in favorites it's 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 something a saints fan worries about all the time when you're expected to win it's great being underdogs like last week when you when you almost pinch it against a top team but you know i hope the the Close loss from last week stings the boys from um, from that last five, ten minutes when we absolutely dominated and just couldn't get over the line. And they bring out that anger against a team that is trying to make the eight. You know, we can't forget that. Melbourne, although they've had their ups and downs this year, they are close enough to make the eight. And if they win this game, I don't know if they, they get back into the eight, but they'd be very close to getting into the eight. So, it, you know, my top two hated teams are Geelong and Melbourne. And you guys know that. Geelong and Melbourne, can't stand them. Geelong are going to make finals, so that's I'm going to have to deal with that again for another year. But it'd be great to you know to end Melbourne's season and um, and get a win and secure our possibly you know at least secure our top eight position for another week and potentially for the first time to make finals since 2011. So this is a massive game for us, absolutely massive game. So um, I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be an interesting sort of environment playing. Um, I think it's at the is it Northern Territory, Alice. Northern Territory, um, warmer conditions, but I think that'll suit us. I think we're well equipped to that, um, and, and we're fit enough to, to get the job done. Their main threats, obviously, are going to be the midfielder. You know, Petrarca has been in phenomenal form, kicking a lot of goals, but getting a lot of the ball. So he's added that string to his bow. And then you've got Clayton Oliver, who's a beast but doesn't use the ball very well. So I think that you know him getting thirty-five touches probably doesn't hurt us. But if Petrarca gets thirty-five touches, He's very direct. He's a good ball user inside 50. Those are the sort of players that we need to watch out for. Um, the other thing, the other reason why I'm pretty confident against Melbourne is anytime we play Melbourne, no, no matter how well we're going or how poorly we're going, we seem to, to have the perfect game plan for them. So if we play that same outside footy where we know their midfielder, you know, their midfield's great at, at going forward and attacking. And when the, ball, when the game's on their terms, they love it. When it's not going their way, their midfield goes to shit. Their midfield doesn't get back, doesn't like chasing, and just loves to handball. So if they've got a hot handball game going on and our pressure's on, we're going to get a lot of turnovers. Their defense is not going to get it's not going to get any support from their midfield, and I think we're going to kick a big score. So if we play the way we did in that last quarter last week, job done. Absolutely. Not many teams would be able to cope with that sort of consistent pressure you know, with their back 50. You know, only the best defences would be able to handle that. And Brisbane's right up there and they nearly cracked. And then Geelong's probably the other one that, that really has a lot of tools and good smalls in that back line that can cope with that sort of pressure. Melbourne, you know, they've got Tomlinson. Stephen May is a bit slow when the ball hits the deck. Lever's quite good, but again, not great at ground level. And I think a lot of the ball's going to be at the ground. They've got Salem, who's great, but... You know, we, we've dealt with players like him before. Hibbert's pretty good. He's good at rebounding. He's got a lot of pace, got a great left foot. We have to watch players like him. If we negate the Hibbards in the back line and the Salems, that give them that sort of rebound. They get the 20 possessions. And uh, like Basha Hooley for Richmond, they create that sort of rebound. If we can take them out of the game, then I think we're fine. We can negate their tolls with our tolls and more, and then we can we can stop the run. Because if there's no run from Melbourne which there is little run from them lately. You know, the Bulldogs exposed them in that sort of sense last week. They got a run on and Melbourne couldn't stop it. If we get a run on, you know, I dare say Melbourne will struggle to, to, to regain ascendancy. But this is those sort of games that we fucked up in the past and, and this is one that we definitely can't at this point because we've only got four games left. They're close enough to us that they could sniff the top eight position if they get the win, but... You know, we've come too far. We need to get the job done. We've, we've been in pretty good form since 
um, since choking to Frio. We've only really had a couple of bad losses and you know the worst one was Geelong and last week was a bit unlucky and we could have taken it at the end. Um, so if we're really serious about making finals, guys, and we're, we're serious about making potentially making top four and, and winning a final and, and going as far as we possibly can this year, you beat Melbourne. Absolutely, you beat Melbourne. Um, but they're a team that, they're a confidence team. We give them a sniff, they'll take over. We just need to make sure from the start that's not happening because they're going to be up and about. You know, they've had a tough week, poor performance. They've dropped six players. They've got their captain in Gorn back, their best player, most important player of the last three or four seasons. They're going to be up for it. But if we can get a run on it and just just quell that excitement and negate their strengths, fully confident. So um, I would go through some of these comments. I don't know if anyone's actually commented, but I can't see any. So that's a bit disappointing. I'm not sure if Facebook's glitching or anything. So I might have to leave it there, guys. If you have commented and I can't see it, um, just post again and I'll um, be sure to respond when I can. But I'll leave it there, guys. Uh, hopefully you're all well and healthy and having a good week. It's good to see the numbers uh, getting down for COVID and hopefully, you know, I, footy's probably not coming back to Melbourne or Victoria this season at all. But as long as you're all staying health and safe and, and um, healthy and safe and the Saints get the win tomorrow night, well, who cares, you know, so... Stay tuned for tomorrow night. After the game, it'll be around 10 o'clock when the game finishes. I'll do my live review. Hopefully then Facebook shows some comments because I can't see any, which is disappointing. Uh, that's one of the best parts of the of the show is to respond to you guys. But um, I'll, I'll respond if there's any after this video. And if you comment again, I'll see it on Facebook or YouTube. So until tomorrow night, take care, guys, and go you Saners.